afternoon here and welcome to another edition of the losingmeals.com preview show. Jose Contreras here alongside Chris Wade, your Los Angeles analyst each and every night, uh, live from the paddock and from Burghardt as well. Chris, welcome back to the program. First of all, thank you for that nice winner last week. Corruptor got the job done. Yeah, he finally broke relatively well and uh, got the lead and held on uh, Held on at the wire. We got 840 on this yeah. horse and uh, got a little of our money back from his prior effort with much, much trouble. So uh, got the job done, see if we can keep it going here this week. Um, our yeah. races, our numbers on Saturday were stellar. Yes. We had the first seven races, our top choice got the job done. The last two races, eight and nine, our second choice got the job done. And then, of course, we came back to reality on Sunday. <laughs> but wasn't Saturday um... – the night that the pick six paid like two thousand dollars or something like that, it yeah. was it was all favorites. It's unbelievable. I mean, the, we had to carry over, and okay. it was like my five my top five choices in the pick six one or the top four, top uh, the first four. four. Then my second two choices ran very well and got the job done, and it paid two thousand dollars. I was expecting three hundred. Yeah, it, when you look at the winners, yeah, you thought, oh, this could pay three hundred at most. I'll be happy with five hundred. And uh, for the people that, that got the, the takedown, they took down $2,000. I wasn't one of them. I tried to beat Fast, Fast Per Se was the name of the horse, one of the favorites around the turn. I tried to beat him, so I didn't connect. But if you hit that pick six, I think you were more than ha- well, you know, happily surprised with that great payout. Yes, it was huge. The biggest price was that the one horse on the ship in. Off seven the to turf, two. Seven to two shot in the first leg. And, and he- it was a turf horse. We, yep. we pushed it. They, if they liked the trip, they love all the Aminos with the tight turns. And the horse sat the trip and got the job done. Had nice too. Started off with a set nine dollar horse, and uh, it paid incredible. It did really did that. I mean, that was both of ours the top selection. That that a rail runner along the you know the rail runner along the inside was uh, cutting distance and actual speed uh, over the daytime circuit. So yeah, congrats to you. You hit the pick six. Uh, in contrast. The place we call, I think, paid like twenty dollars. So compare that to the place uh, to the pick six. The pick six really overpaid, given what the place we call ended up paying. Well, yeah. When I looked at the place, when I look at the pick six, I go, ah, uh, really? That's incredible. Yeah. So when I saw, because we we had to pick four. I mean, the place we call, we had it four times, and then we you see the pick six paid gigantic. You're expecting a little bit of money, and yeah. then it paid like I think it was twenty five dollars and change. Yeah. yeah, four times. But you know, that's the way it goes. Yes, and then I think the place all came back and paid the next night. I think it paid four hundred dollars, but on seven out of eight. So it was yeah. a contrasting night uh, at Los Alamitos. So what any of you were able to catch any kind of ticket uh, last weekend at Los Al? Congrats to you there for giving us giving us a corruptor. We mentioned when Oscar Peinado teams up with Eddie Willis, they've been doing fairly well, yeah. and he got them out on that runner. So let's talk about what's going on this weekend at Los Alamitos, of course. We have the running of the grade one Los Alamitos Oaks on Saturday night. And then we have the El Primero de Año Derby coming up on Sunday. Uh, a race program on Saturday night with the Oaks being the eighth event. Uh, but you're going to take us to race number six. Talk to me about the horse you like. Race number six, uh, I believe it's the one intelligent. Yeah, this horse uh, was, a, was the favorite last time and uh, had a good amount of trouble. This horse is well, well-bred, well-connected. And um, this horse had trouble in that particular. We got fractures, kind of back ball, got in close quarters, and uh, was loaded behind horses. And it was was very impressive. It was a very impressive workout. The inside post hopefully should promote a clear path to the wire. And on my numbers, everything factored in, um, this horse has got my best figure. And uh, hopefully a clean start puts this horse right there early and late as our top choice because uh, well-connected and a uh, good amount of talent. just a matter of getting out of the gate. Yeah, and he's uh, uh he's gonna draw the rail here intelligent. We'll take a look at that replay back on February 18th. And here it is. And uh he had post number three in the field of six, so he was number four. So uh number four intelligent. He did take money going off at uh what even money this this night. Um and uh talk to us through this replay. Yeah, the horse got a little little fractures, not so bad, kind of got a back bobbled and uh Back bobbled away from the gate and kind of forced in away from the gate and slowing the stride. He's crossed and uh, he's got a good memory. It's a nice size individual under a hand show, put forth a nice run midway, but then got in close quarters in the wire right here again. He's locked and loaded with run. You can see the horse is ready to rumble, but uh, broke slow, took a while to get going, was moving well. Uh, 
well on close quarters or a tight hold near the wire, but galloped off very well. The horse had a good amount of talent, just not getting out of the gate. Yeah, watch. I'm going to let it roll right here. Watch how he gets intimidated one to three crosses over the path. Right there, you can see he's not happy. He's already not happy. He's slow, slow into stride, and he's trying to – the rider's trying to find that path by moving it outwards, but at that point, it was just too much work to do. But I like the way he was finishing. He was still trying to show some run, to, run approaching the finish line right here. Yeah, the horses are – like I said, the horses don't really want to go up in there because he's behind horses, but he's locked and loaded. He's behind horses because if he doesn't take up right there, who knows what could happen, but he's got a good amount of run. He got beat three quarters of a length for the whole thing, and he had more than that in trouble and wasn't even didn't even really run hard. I mean, he was trying to run hard, but he had nowhere to go, and he lost so much ground. Very well could have won that race with any kind of a trip, and uh, hopefully the clear path puts his horse right there early in the lake because we know on my numbers, he's the best number, just a matter of getting out of the gate and showing it. Yeah, and that's all you got to do when you go out 110, 110 yards. All you got to do is get out of the gate. Uh, luckily for him, his previous two starts, he broke on top, and he was leading for most of those races before giving way. So you would figure the short of this is, would be a good fit, but it, it's, it comes down to that break, right? Got to be able to break clean in front of the inside post. Yeah, if he gets away clean, this is the runner that should be uh, right there and late at the 110 yard distance. We know those can finish. It's just uh, on my numbers, everything's factored in. He's got my best number. Oh, by, you know, half length at the 110-yard distance. That would be expanded if it was like, going a little bit longer. But they just need a clean getaway for uh, Kathy to get the victory there in tonight's uh, sixth event. Yeah, best of luck to uh, Miss Kathy Monty, owner and breeder of Intelligent. Uh, Overbet is a 2-1 to one or more in any favorite. He comes out of the Derby trial back on March 3rd. Church Appeal uh, is a runner that I chased last time. Uh, Chris, I gave out a pick-six ticket on carry overnight on FanDuel TV. I went five out of six with that ticket, Chris. Guess who I missed? I needed Church Appeal to go six out of six, and the pick six ended up paying twenty five thousand that night. If Church Appeal would have won, possibly possibly could have paid more because remember the winner, one of a kind, Jay. I think went off at two to one that night, and Church no. Appeal was four to one. So I, I think I've got to give another look to Church Appeal just because he was breaking so sharply prior to that last effort last time out. Yeah, and then coming off a 110-yard affair, going back at the distance, that gives him a, a speed advantage and uh, has a look at the outcome in that event as well. All right, so that's going to be Chris' selection, intelligent to inform us, Kathy Maggi and James Glenn Jr. She's a Franco. We'll have them out. Uh, going, in, uh, going in race number nine, a short distance of 110 yards. Well, I have you here. I want to skip ahead to, you know, we'll dive in more to the two-year-olds later on. Maybe professors, you will have us some insight here. But race number eight is the grade one. Los Amitos Oaks, $404,000 here is the purse. Uh, tremendous field here assembled for this uh, year's edition of the Oaks. Of course, uh, you have a field that is led by the fastest qualifier, Asher. Boy, did she look impressive on trials night, Chris. You, she was geared down late, and she clocked home in 1987. Yeah, this is a horse that uh, won the previous race going 350 yards despite a shoe repair. When they yeah. have shoe repairs... They don't ever, like nine no. times out of ten, they just don't run. But this horse won, won through a shoe repair, and that, that just showed that the horse was ready to rumble and uh, broke on the lead and extended with run left to give. It's a very impressive performance and uh, is definitely the one to catch there for uh, the connections in that affair. Is she going to be your top pick, Asher? She's going to be my top pick. I got a stab in that race. I got okay. a long shot that uh, – Okay. If you watch I've, the tape, I've got a long shot too. I've got a long shot too. So yes, uh, you know, if you're watching the show, I gave Asher the nod in the Holiday Candy Cap. She got the job done for me at nearly four to one. Of course, I liked her back on trials night, but I do think there's one live long shot in this race. Let's see if we, if we agree. Uh, we'll say the number at the count of three. Okay, at the count of three, we'll say the number so that people don't don't think we're kind of just uh, sharing here. But at the count of three, I want you to say the number. One, two, three. Seven. One. I said one. You said seven? Yes. Okay. Talk to me about the seven. Okay. This is a horse that comes out of the same race as Asher and uh, was drawn right next to the horse. And this horse kind of leaned back at the start and brushed the side of the gate and fell back and was crossed and locked and loaded behind horses. Is a good-looking gray that the one at a big, big price uh, prior as like 23 or 24 to one. The building yeah. is there, and this horse can just break – with the field, the horse has a big look at the outcome. Also, a W in that fair was separate heart, a horse who had a good amount of trouble. You like this horse, and his number's not that far off at a price in that eighth event. 
Yeah, so we both like a couple of possible long shots that could either complete the exacta with Asher, or if things go right, the seven could step up and the one could step up. So maybe that's the way to play him because it's all about trips, like you know, right? And you know, sometimes you you get into a little bit of traffic trouble, it opens it up, it opens it up for someone else. So uh, I thought Separate Heart was finishing with good interest. Obviously, she's she's got to deal with the inside post, but she was she was gaining ground. If she would have broken just a tad bit better. She might have won that trial. Now she's got to deal with an inside post, but I, I think she's an interesting horse if she gets away cleanly from that inside draw for Juan Alemán and Oscar Peinado. Yeah, this horse uh, got fractures, back bobbled and crossed, and finished very well as a, as a horse to watch on my charts. And with everything factored in, the number's not that far off, so the horse has a look. This could go any number of ways in that eight event, and uh, you could be looking at a, at a big, big uh, pick four payout if uh, Asher comes up on the, the back end. Of this race and this horse this race is very very close on the numbers it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun fun to renew of the great one los amigos Oaks. that would be race number eight the last race on the program on um uh, on saturday night all right uh chris thank you for that selection of course uh we'll be uh, all tuned in for the saturday night races at los amigos corruptor was your winner last week let's see if it intelligent you can get the job done this week um baby races is officially here baby races are officially here Race number seven at Los Al will feature the first two-year-old event of the season here at Los Alamitos. We'll dive more into those uh, two-year-old uh, uh, two-year-olds with Professor G later on in the program. In addition to Los Al, what else are you handicapping here for LosAlamitos.com and the Nightlines? On Saturday night, we got the races four through twelve at uh, Remington Park, and it's a uh, it's a uh, it's it's a it's a car with the many many a stake races. So it's a, it's quality. Okay. Runners going poacher, paints, and or quarter horses. And uh, our selections are on the Nightlines program in the back and on the website. All right. Looking forward to, the, to that analysis and those selections as well. All right, Chris, you have a good rest of your Thursday afternoon. And I'll talk to you this weekend down at Los Alamitos. All right, boss. You have a good night. The best of racing is always at Los Alamitos with exciting action every Saturday and Sunday night. Next on the stake schedule is the grade one Los Alamitos Oaks with a great field led by fastest qualifier Asher and many of the nation's top fillies, plus the Grade 2 El Primero del Año Derby, with graded stakes win a political rivalry, Five Bar Supreme, and many other top sophomores. It's always a great weekend of action, with the best of racing at Los Alamitos. Welcome back to the program. Yes, uh, we are featuring the three olds on display here in the greatest stakes events on the weekend. We have the Oaks on Saturday night, and then we have... Uh, the El Primero Derby on Sunday. Welcome back here. Now joined by Michael Rona, the voice of Los Amigos. Michael, how are you doing on this uh, nice uh, Thursday afternoon? Doing just great. Thanks, Jose. How are you? Good. Good to catch up with you here. Uh, before we get into this weekend selection here, I do want to give you uh, a, an excuse for the trip you got last time out. Strangely, strangely was pretty much uh, wiped out last week. Yeah. Uh, she had gate three in a field of six. The number four horse broke inwards yeah. and took out the inside half of the field. Numbers one, two, and three were all badly compromised, and the four horse was disqualified. And you might remember that the outside two, who had the clear sailing, pulled away from the rest. They, I think the second horse was <laughs> three lengths in front of the third or something. You know, the, yeah. the five and the six just had it to themselves because of all of the trouble. So no luck for Strangely. Um no luck for M. Rona in recent weeks, come to think of it. My pick in the Oaks trial a few weeks ago was also badly compromised at the start. And uh, so let's let's hope we get at least a clear crack at them with my long shot pick in the Oaks on Saturday night. At least uh, I'd like to see the horse have her chance. I like that you're giving us a long shot look into uh, the great one, Los Amigos Oaks, which will go as race number eight on Saturday night's eight race program. Uh, 400 yards, we talked about a field of nine, um, uh, field of nine, not a field of 10, because we see that the name missing from these finals is Hubba Hubba. I don't know the reason why Hubba Hubba was not able to return to the final, but Asher did the fastest qualifier. Of course, this one was ultra impressive. Um, last time out winning pretty much geared down, but I know you like the odds and the looks of Mark and Analyst. Well, we spoke about the Oaks trials on this preview show the, the week after the trials were run. And I remember mentioning 
how impressed I was that market analyst simply made it into the final by virtue of her very light preparation. She'd only had one turn and work at 220 yards leading up to her comeback off a layoff. She hadn't run since July last year. And uh, so I've got to think there is scope for her to improve quite significantly fitness-wise. you got to think that, you know, trending in the right direction, if she kind of bounces back to that form that we saw last season, she's got a shot. And you might be onto something here for her to be able to run back to some of those efforts as a cheerleader. And why don't we take a look at that uh, last two-year-old win, which was back on July 8th. Sure. Yeah, this was very impressive uh, in the Governor's Cup Futurity Trial. Uh, she had the outside post position and she won by over a length. She won on debut also by more than a length. She's put up two clear-cut victories, uh, admittedly both of them coming from the outside post. But uh, she was very strong in this race. The horse that finished second was Optical Illusion, who later in the season finished a terrific uh, runner-up in the two million futurity final behind train station v and look how far market analysts drew away from her opposition uh, in that uh, particular trial to the governor's cup futurity but then went to the sidelines she she obviously had a problem missed the final and did not resurface for the rest of the year but uh, that that just gives you a glimpse just a reminder since it's some time ago of what the filly is capable of when right Yes, so she has shown flashes of talent. Now, this is her first start since that July run. It was uh, in the Oaks uh, trial, and this was the final trial of the night, race number 12. There were only three trials. So race number 12, and uh, she had gate number three. Yes, and a fairly clean trip. Uh, might have just drifted in slightly at the start, maybe a, a slight bump, but she uh, she had every chance thereafter. Uh, she was beaten home by Hubba Hubba, whom we've discussed, unfortunately, for Elena Andrade, has not made it into the final. And double down one, two, three, the top two-year-old filly of last season, finishes second. That's market analyst over on the inside third and gallops out. Well, you'll catch a glimpse of her there going into the turn along the inside. She's right up there with them, looking very strong around that clubhouse turn. Look, for her first run in so long... Again, I just can't get it out of my mind that prior to her debut, she had a couple of impressive gateworks. But off this long layoff, coming into an Oaks trial at 400 yards, all she had was a 220 turn and work. So it, it, it makes me wonder how rushed the preparation was and how much improvement there might be for a classy filly. She's not particularly well drawn again in gate three. And she loses Cruz Mendez, who's been her pilot on each occasion so far. Mendez rides Silverback number seven. I'm not reading much into that from the, the, the jockey's standpoint because uh, Mendez is so closely linked with Jose Flores, mm -hmm. the trainer of Silverback. Um, so I, I don't think it's uh, a surprise that he would go there. The horses are similar odds. They're both double-digit odds. Still, uh, I do acknowledge that that means that market analysts will have a new rider for the first time. It happens to be Irving Lara, and he'll do an adequate job, I'm sure. Um, at 15 to 1, I'm willing to find out if my theory is correct. You know, if she were half those odds, I probably wouldn't be bothering talking about her at such length. But mm -hmm. she's, she's huge odds. She's got ability. She's got some class. And she has the potential to take a really significant step forward fitness-wise. Yeah, I mean, the odds are attractive for sure. I kind of mentioned that the odds are attractive, I think, on separate heart. Chris mentioned that the odds are attractive on silver back. And I think the odds will remain attractive on those three respective runners because if Ash Asher is going to take money based on that very impressive geared down trial win, but also the, the Monte Rosa trainees are going to take money. Southern Devine is going to take money because she's drawn on the outside post. And Double Down 1 to 3, who was the winner of the kindergarten, is going to take money just because of her consistent form. So there's going to be some attractive prices to be had on some of the runners outside of those obvious uh, favorites. Yes, and full respect to Asher and the great job Mark Youngers has done with her. Also, 
Um, I'm not overlooking the fact that Southern Divine won a trial to the two million futurity from the outside post, three starts back, gate nine in a field of nine and won very well indeed to get into the field for the two million futurity where she was wiped out at the start. So the eight and the nine figure very logically. I'm scared to death of both of them. I, I just feel that market analyst is a horse at least worth including in exotic wages and at 15 to one, just just have a little something across the board on her in case she sparks up and uh, she's capable of, of matching strides with the best fillies, I think. Yeah, so she's going to be 15 to 1 on Ant Burgers Morning Night for owner breeder Dr. Steve Burns and trained by Mike Castleman. So that's the preview look of the Grade 1 Los Amigos Oaks coming up on Saturday night. Eight races there on the program. We still don't have the entries for Sunday night, but Sunday night will feature the running the great two El Primero de Año Derby, the boys, uh, will be uh, in action on Sunday night. And if I think, if I remember correctly, I think um, Asher might have posted the fastest overall time. Even that, the, there was the night where we had the Phillies and the Colts trials yeah. on the same night, yeah, yeah. Uh, because of a, a washout of the yeah. uh, Saturday night trials for the Oaks. They were yeah, moved to the Sunday. Would, yeah, actually, I'll take that back. I think one of the boys won 1985, and I think she won 1987. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, boys and girls were, were on display in the same uh, same night, and now we'll be separating them. Ladies go first on Saturday. We'll have the boys on Sunday night. So that's a look at the great one, Los Obres Oaks. Looking forward to that card this upcoming Saturday night. Yes, right, indeed. Anything else, for, anything else for the public, Michael? Um, only to wish you bon voyage, mate. You're off on yes. a little uh, vacation, and uh, I hope you have a very refreshing, enjoyable time with the family. Thank you. Yes, it is my my uh, my Jackie. My Jacqueline has spring break from school. So, uh, you know, when they weren't in school just yet of school age, we can just pick up and go somewhere on a Monday, Tuesday. But now we're tied up because of school, so we we're planning a little getaway around her spring break. So looking, looking forward to it. I'll be away this upcoming weekend, uh, but maybe I'll share a few photos there on social media. And uh, maybe have a, a margarita or two on your name. <laughs> Please do. And I'll uh, look forward <laughs> to following your adventures on Twitter. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. All right. Well, have a good rest of your Thursday afternoon. I'll talk to you uh, not this weekend, but maybe the following weekend. I will. Okay, mate. Cheers. The best of racing is always at Los Alamitos with exciting action every Saturday and Sunday night. Next on the stake schedule is the grade one Los Alamitos Oaks with a great field led by fastest qualifier Asher and many of the nation's top fillies, plus the Grade 2 El Primero del Año Derby, with graded stakes win a political rivalry, Five Bar Supreme, and many other top sophomores. It's always a great weekend of action, with the best of racing at Los Alamitos. Yes, uh, welcome back to the program. That weekend has arrived, the weekend of the Grade 1 Los Alamitos Oaks and the El Primero del Año Derby Grade 2 event, which will be on Sunday night. Welcome back to the program. Now joined by Orlando Gutierrez, Professor G, our Director of Marketing and Publicity here at Los Alamitos. Professor, how are you doing? Welcome back. I'm doing well, Jose. Thank you. Yeah, big weekend of racing at Los Alamitos Race Course, like you mentioned. Two great finals coming up this weekend. And also, the two-year-olds are back here at Los Alamitos. The class yep. of 2024 will have a couple of races this weekend of these juveniles. We have a race in uh, on Saturday night. We can talk a little bit about those horses in that race. Of course, we show all the gate works available here at losalamitos.com. And we'll get to see some of those two-year-old works that uh, we've been waiting so long to uh, check out. And now we get to see these horses perform here on Saturday night. We also have uh, a race for two-year-olds that should be on, on the card on Sunday. So looking forward to that. The Sunday card will be a lot of horses that worked on March the 9th. I'll give us some names as well as we okay. get uh, into this segment. Sounds like a good plan. Good to have you back here. And uh, we'll talk about um, what's going on, of course, with the two-year-olds and also something to look forward to and something that you found out about, that you were present about. We'll give you a little tidbit of what that was uh, later on towards the end of the program. Let's talk about the first baby race of the season. It is baby talk season here <laughs> at Los Alamitos Race Course. 220 yards, race number seven. There's two races left. You know what time it is. Late Diddy Devil time. So, Philip Seven here going a distance of 220 yards. And uh, Professor G, we have Professor G's notebook, work and analysis in the Nightlands and also losomitos.com. 
Uh, we have reviewed some of these pedigrees and uh, these workouts already for the Night Lights Professor. Uh, talk to me about maybe one of the workout that featured a couple of these two runners in the same work. Yeah, we'll go to set number three on March the 1st. And a couple of horses from that uh, from that work will be in action here in our first baby race of the year. The number one horse, Chardonnay, work uh, between horses. There was a three-horse set uh, in that work. And then you have to go all the way to the outside post, number six. There's actually seven runners in here. Set the edge uh, running from post number six. Also going in 12-4 from that same set three. So we get a look at two horses for the price of one, Jose. Chardonnay from the rail and the six set the edge from post number six. We'll talk a little bit about Chardonnay first. Actually, I picked this horse on top in this in this race and a little bit out of a handful there. She uh, she was moving her head a little bit, but uh, once she got settled, she hopped a little bit at the start, a little bit slow, but then kicked it into gear past the gap and was flying there. Second half of the race ends up winning the drill. Uh, by just a bit, and had a pretty nice gallop out from there. Get a little bit crowded there uh, around the clubhouse turn. It was slowed. 12-4 uh, for this work for Chardonnay had also gone 12-9 in her first work. Not all of them post two works. Jose uh, mm -hmm. Chardonnay just happened to have two works here. Uh, we'll we'll see some horses with only one gate drill uh, here at Los Alamitos. If you have one gate drill, you can go uh, 220 yards. If you have two, you can make your debut in a 300-yard race. Chardonnay with two gate drills is going to debut at 220 yards. Now let's take a look at the six. Set the edge. Uh, called by KBN Corona out of a famous little Reba. Uh, winner of the Ridoso Futurity, if I remember correctly. So set the edge. Working here from the outside post. Was standing nicely. Will break in. Breaking in just a little bit. Was trailing early, but uh, under a hand right, pretty much the whole weight looked solid uh, by the midway point. Just trailing uh, Chardonnay throughout and uh, right at the wire. They just about hit the wire at the same time. The time for uh, both of these fourth fastest of 37. He also had posted a 13 flat gay drill uh, in his <laughs> first outing February the 10th, Jose. What I liked about that mover on the outside, it just, he was much more developed. He looked like a more like a gelding type, more bigger, stronger, longer strides. You can tell it looks like set the edge on the outside. He's going to enjoy once he gets 300, 350, 400. I got to agree with you, Jose, as well. And maybe that's why I went with Chardonnay, I think, at 220 yards. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, she had a little bit of trouble there. Some excuses there was a. Uh, you know, battling around a little bit. But, again, she was working from the inside, happens to draw, uh, excuse me, was working between horses, happens to draw the inside first out uh, there. But, like you said, set the edge. Maybe a horse that will get better with that extra distance. A little bit about the pedigree notes. Um, Chardonnay, uh, lots of winning siblings, including Asher. So, a sibling to Asher. Asher is our favorite, our more than favorite in the great one, Los Amitos Oaks. So that is a sibling to Chardonnay. Set the edge, you mentioned the dam. Uh, she won the grade one. Ridoso. That's for cash maturity. Oh, that's, that's for cash. In Texas, she banked nearly 200,000. She has produced six winners, but only one debut winner from 10 starters. So some nice pedigrees already on display here in the first baby race of the season. Um, let's talk about one more workout. And uh, this is a work for the runner. Uh, on the outside, number seven, Genesis. And uh, I, I want to share this workout from February 28th. Here it is, February 28th. And uh, Genesis was on the inside of a two, three team set here. She's going to break inwards uh, right there. But watch how she's quick and distracted. At this point, the rider is high in the saddle and the hands are tight. Not really asking for or asking her for much. She's striding away with good early quickness. She's more of a compact filly. I think she's built uh, for that 220, 300-yard distance. I just like how, how her strikes were quick and effective. So I, I think she'll she'll do well. I think she's uh, she's live there at 92, and she draws the outside post for owner-breeder Bobby Cox. Pedigree-wise, uh, hard to not like that pedigree, Professor. This is a full sibling to 
Chazak will bank nearly a million bucks, won the Edberg Mini Futurity and the LaSalle Super Derby a few years back. So very nicely bred here. Genesis um, draws the outside post, and I like the, the early quickness from that one uh, coming out of the gate. Even though the time was only 1260, it, it kind of seemed like she, she could have gone faster if asked. Yeah, some of my notes on uh, Genesis, she traveled under a comfortable ride and was not asked at all in the final 100 yards uh, and wasn't even asked for much in her gallop out either and just, uh, you know, looked pretty solid throughout. First first time out, went 13 flat in her first gate drill. And like you mentioned, uh, really nice pedigree, uh, the talented mare, all about ease, the mother of Genesis. Yeah, so it's going to be a nice uh, way to kick off the, the two-year-old, the baby season at Los Alamitos with these two-year-olds going to 20 on Saturday night. Let's talk about the big one, the great one. Los Alamitos, Oaks, $404,000. Um, field of nine, and we talked uh, with my coin, Chris, about this race. Asher, uh, ultra impressive, winning gear down on trials. I professor. She will be tough to beat with a, a repeat effort or any improvement. Uh, but obviously, this is a field of talented fillies. Absolutely. You got Southern Divine, uh, who is a uh, futurity placed runner, ran second in the PCQHRA Breeders' Futurity, losing to uh, the PCQHRA champion two year old Geldy. Political rivalry, double down one, two, three. The winner of the Kindergarten Futurity uh, last year. Uh, this will be the fifth running of the Los Alamitos Oaks. Every one of those runnings has had. A purse of four hundred thousand dollars or more. Just one note is that there will be going nine runners in this race. Hubba Hubba will not be participating. And Hubba Hubba uh, trainer Elena Andrade did say that uh, she uh, she has been retired and will be going to Broodmare uh, after uh, uh, having a little physical ailment following okay. the trial. But nine runners will be going in the uh, the Los Alamitos Oaks. One other note. Out of those uh, first four winners of the Oaks, uh, the 400-yard race, three out of the four had already won at 400 yards going into the final. The, the mm. one that had not, uh, Sweet Tess, ran second in her trial to the Los Alamitos Oaks, then went on to win the final at odds. I think it was like 20 to 1 odds. So uh, look for horses that have already had big success at 400 yards, either had won or, uh, or finished second in that race. Kind of, uh, kind of focus in, and like you said, Asher looked really good. So then Divine also with a nice victory as well. Yeah. So let's uh, let's quickly do the exercise. One or finish second at four hundred. The one separate heart finished second at four hundred. Last time I'm missing by a neck. I think she's to me she's a live long shot in this spot. Checking Gartel uh, qualified to the two million one eight a trial. So she makes the qualifications. Uh, she finished second to Asher. Actually, she won favorite over Asher. On uh, trials night, Mark and Analyst, that's uh, the horse my Corona likes, uh, third in that trial. So still only one starter, 400 in the mode. She showed significant improvement to um, upset at 24 to 1 with that, uh, uh, with that made, excuse me, that allowance of back on January 6th. Uh, she finished third on trials night. Favorite city, I remember this one being a big upset in the trials to the Governor's Cup at 27 to 1. And of course, uh, she has plenty of good experience going 400. Uh, she might have the most of uh, actually of this field. You talked about double down one to three. It feels like more often than not, it feels like she's breaking well every single time. And I think that's what makes double down one to three a very um, a legitimate top contender here. Uh, Silverback is a runner. Chris Wade gave a look given on that uh, that win at 400 two back. We talked Asher. Of course, she's in very good form. And some of the mind draws a favorable post on the outside. Uh, and she won her trial um, back in uh, November 19th of last season. So some good experience already to be had in this field going for 100. Yeah, Jose. And uh, how about some of the siblings that, that these uh, nice group of fillies uh, are, are have in the mode? Uh, full sister to future version who won the Governor's Cup uh, Derby last year. Favorite city, I have to a political pants. We've talked about that in the past. Uh, Silverback Taka was a really nice mayor out here. And I uh, gotta remember, Silverback won her trial to the two million, like you, uh, like you referred to. Asher uh, beat the males in the holiday handicap, and what a nice performance there. 
so you got some really, really nice runners. Even market analyst uh, is a uh, is related to uh, mornings with Maria, who is a, a stakes place mm -hmm. as well. So a really good field here, Jose. I thought the long shots uh, separate. Hard one being one of them from the from the rail uh, Gentry Farms. Uh, but you, you're gonna find very few uh, horse. Uh, horse ownership groups with better better group of fillies year in mm -hmm. and year out than Gentry Farms and yeah. uh, or Silverback is another long shot that I like as well. Uh, breaking from post number seven, Jose Flores still one win away from a hundred stakes wins here at Los Alamitos for his career. And he's got Silverback, Silverback at twelve to one on uh, Saturday night. So that's a look at the Oaks. Uh, your official top pick in the Nine Nights, Professor. I just went ahead and went with Asher Jose. Uh, just just based on on the way that this Philly has performed. You look at that nice breeding line. Yeah. You looked at the uh, at the nice post position. Christian Ramos and and her have just clicked every time, uh, other than one race in the Rainbow Futurity. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go with the my top pick being the eight Asher Southern Divine, as well being uh, the, my other runner here. Okay, and from the prices, who would be the long shot you're you're interested here? Uh, the one separate heart, and also the seven silver back in the program. I put separate heart as my uh, my price play. Okay, I like that. I like that as well. I like uh, uh, that is my long shot play as well. Separate heart. I like the way she was finishing on uh, trials night. All right, that's a look at what's to come this weekend, specifically on Saturday night at Los Alamitos. Uh, you did have a quick getaway to Las Vegas, Nevada, to be part of the NQHA convention that was happening this past weekend. Uh, tell us how, how did it go and, uh, you know, how many happy faces and familiar faces you saw down there? Happy faces, all of them. All of them <laughs> were happy faces, Jose. Uh, we had a couple of meetings with the racing committee, maybe around the, uh, the, the third and a half hour into that committee meeting, maybe you saw a little bit of faces where the smiles were a little bit tired. <laughs> not me, not me. No. But uh, it was great to uh, meet so many great uh, people involved in our industry uh, and uh, looking forward to continuing the involved, being involved in the racing committee. Had a chance to spend some time with uh, Mr. Ed Burgard. We visited the South Point uh, Horse Players Room in their beautiful room there at the South Point, an excellent place to enjoy the racing action. There was also, uh, I believe that there was a, a roping contest going on okay. in the South arena and also yeah. some bowling championships as well so it was a, a a very busy weekend for the south point casino again the uh the horse racing room tremendous one of the things that i really liked is that no matter what track is going the live that's what you get to hear the live audio so we got to i got to hear michael rona pretty much Perfect. the entire time that uh michael is talking from the moment that the horses go on the on the track for the post parade uh, all the way to uh, to the race call as well. Then they'll switch. I, I think Charlestown was also featured, Meadowlands as well, FanDuel TV. Uh, they had a channel there dedicated to FanDuel TV, so I could check you guys out as well. You guys were showing Remington Park. So uh, a really fun spot there to watch and enjoy all the nighttime action uh, there at the South Point Casino. Yeah, at the South Point, if you've never been there, it's it's uh, right before I'm through, through to the Strip, uh, a few miles south there. Uh, it is a great facility, very horse player friendly. They have a separate race book just for the race in itself, in addition to the regular uh, sports book as well. It is a great facility, um, plenty of things to do. Um, prices are great. Uh, you know, the, uh, I love the steakhouse there. Um, Silverado Steakhouse is the name that comes to mind. Yes, they, they have a terrific, terrific meal to be had there. Uh, and prices are very, very nice, very fair pricing for the locals and for the out-of-towners. So, uh, yes, I, I support that statement there with uh south point south point being a great great facility and tell us uh something else you got to you got to check out while you were there during the convention yeah it was there. one of the big highlights of the of the convention on saturday uh saturday afternoon yeah. they announced the aqha hall of fame class of 2024 they announced three men and three horses that were uh named to the hall of fame uh the aqha hall of fame one of them being involved in uh, in horse racing, particularly a Los Alamitos race course. Of course, I'm talking about the great Paul Jones, trainer Paul Jones, now a Hall of Famer. So, uh, I, you know, it was it was a really cool moment 
to uh, be there, uh, be part of the announcement, listen to the announcement. I had a chance to take some video as well from my seat, uh, watching the, uh, the announcement. So uh, we put together a, a little video there of, of the actual time when Paul Jones gets unveiled as a new AQHA Hall of Famer. And how about what a cool moment for him on Sunday night. Uh, Sunday night, he wins his first stakes victory as a Hall of Famer, Jose. That's he right. Stakes wins here at Los Alamitos. But on Sunday night, that was his first one as an AQHA Hall of Famer. So I had a chance to talk to Paul as well, following the victory by Terrific Phoenix in the Muniz Handicap. Uh, how about we close out this uh, this show, this uh, weekend's preview show, with uh, talking to the great Paul Jones and enjoying that great moment of him being announced an AQHA Hall of Famer. Sounds like, sounds like a great way to wrap up the weekend here at LosMinus.com preview show. There's a quick look at, at the webpage there, uh, LosMinus.com, Hall of Famer. Uh, Hall of Fame trainer Paul Jones saddles to River Phoenix to the Muniz victory. What a good way to end the weekend for not only him and all his team that has been around for a very, very long time, including right there, the gentleman in the vest there right there, longtime assistant Roque. Roque was longtime assistant. He's been a big part of the barn successes over the years. So congrats to Paul Jones, a newly minted uh, inductee to the Hall of Fame, AQHA. And, of course, he's been a, a big influence here. Uh, at Los Limitos over the years. So we'll end the show uh, showing that video. Thank you for getting us that video, the sights and sound, Professor G. Uh, anything else for the BM public? No, just remember, a great weekend of racing here at Los Alamitos, 6.05 p.m. on Saturday. The car will feature the uh, the first baby race of the year and, of course, the great one, Los Alamitos Oaks. Thank you, everyone, for continuing to uh, tune in for the show and uh, continuing to support horse racing here at Los Alamitos Racecourse. That sounds like a great way to wrap it up. Uh, so that'll do it for us here on the previous show. Uh, again, in the baby race, I like the seven Genesis as my top pick on the outside, and you like Chardonnay along the rail, right? There we go, Jose. All right, so inside, outside. We're going to go inside, outside, see what happens in the first baby race of the season. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Professor G, have a good rest of your Thursday. For the viewers, thank you for joining us here on this week on the LosLomitos.com preview show. We hope to see you out there at the races live at Los Lomitos sometime soon. Talk to you next week. And enjoy this montage there uh, talking about Paul Jones, the newly minted AQHA Hall of Fame trainer for this new class of 2023, uh, 2024, excuse me. Have a great rest of your night. We'll talk to you later. Thanks so much, Jose. See you soon. Year after year, night racing's best bets are at Los Alamitos Racecourse. The Los Alamitos early and late pick fours. Both wagers continue to feature outstanding pools in 2024 and terrific payouts. The early pick often has pools of over $180,000, and the late pick four often has pools of more than $150,000. And remember, Los Alamitos still offers the $10,000 pick six promo on Sunday nights. Year after year, night racing's best bets are at Los Alamitos. Play them on Saturday and Sunday nights. The best of racing is always at Los Alamitos with exciting action every Saturday and Sunday night. Next on the stakes schedule is the Grade 1 Los Alamitos Oaks with a great field led by fastest qualifier Asher and many of the nation's top fillies, plus the Grade 2 El Primero del Año Derby with graded stakes win a political rivalry, Five Bar Supreme and many other top sophomores. It's always a great weekend of action with the best of racing at Los Alamitos.